With explosive success, a number of public bandmate disputes, an impressive number of hits, and a slew of controversies, it's impressive how much this brother-fronted group has done with some of the simplest music in mainstream rock. A band which utilizes simple bar chords, root bass notes, a wailing lead singer, basic rhythm, and a bit of distortion to create a truly impressive wall of sound which has captivated fans since the early 1990s. Oasis. Oasis has all the instrumentation of a basic rock band. The core band consisting of drummer Tony McCarroll, later to be replaced by Alan White, Paul McGuigan on the bass, Paul Arthurs on the rhythm guitar, and two brothers at the forefront, Liam Gallagher on vocals and Noel Gallagher on lead guitar. The band was originally just Liam, Tony, and the two Pauls, but the band was a bit of a racket. Noel heard them at a show and promised to join them if they let him be the main songwriter and lead the band. They mostly played rock and Britpop, usually on the more softer, melodic side. Oasis is most obviously inspired by the Beatles, using a variety of elements from the Fab Four, but that comparison is often exaggerated to an extent. Aside from a few references or a few similar musical bits, the music doesn't sound all that similar. Still, they're obviously an influence, but other bands such as classics like The Who, Rolling Stones, and The Stone Roses, legends such as Jimi Hendrix and Bob Dylan, and some others like the Bee Gees and Velvet Underground have been directly referenced as influences to the band. Oasis, like many bands, has had an explosive start with a tapering end as far as their discography goes, meaning all the good stuff is in the first few CDs. There are definitely some standout songs later in their career, but the first two are for the most part the uncontested first and second place holders for the band. Definitely Maybe can be argued as one of the world's greatest debut albums, and for what it is, it's definitely impressive. The band's signature wall of sound is most present here, and they ditched the dark brooding tone that made many bands famous in the 90s. The lyrics are simple, cheesy at times, the beat's simple, and the instrumentation nothing revolutionary, yet there is something immediately drawing to the record. Lots of credit has to go to Owen Morris, the mixer who brought the band to their full, loud, and abrasive potential. There are standouts here, but not a single skippable song in the list. Rock and Roll Stars, Cigarettes and Alcohol, Live Forever, Supersonic and Slide Away are all highly regarded classics, but there isn't filler between them. Whether it be the grungiest track, Bring It On Down, or the soft and solemn Married with the Children, this album is filled with incredible ideas, and to many they would never return to this level again. But to others, this album is eclipsed by something even greater, the album that made them world famous. What's the Story Morning Glory comes with a different side of Oasis, and beyond a few outliers later in their catalog, all of their mainstream hits can be found here. Wonderwall, every young guitarist's first song, the long epic Champagne Supernova, and the classic nonsensical Don't Look Back in Anger are all rock mainstays to this day. Noel Gallagher had stated that it definitely maybe was about dreaming of being a pop star in a band. This album is about actually being a pop star in a band, and that quote seems very accurate. This album is commonly found amongst the best albums of the 90s, a capping off before a golden age of Britpop. It's hard to say what exactly makes this album different. It definitely seems more polished, the melodies more distinct. Instruments such as violins make a band debut, and it seems like the scope was wider for this outing. But overall, it shares a lot of similarities with Definitely Maybe. The wall of sound is present in a handful of songs along with catchy hooks, wailing lyrics, and simple instrumentation. From there, the rest of their albums seem to suffer a massive drop in quality on the whole. There are some great songs throughout their career, but each album seems collectively weaker. I will say that if you end up really enjoying the first two albums, the third follows their lead best. The songs are all upwards of 5 minutes long, with many being 8 or 9 minutes, but they are definitely worth listening to. For starting out with the band, you definitely want to go for one of their first albums. If you are a bit more into Britpop and want some very easy listening, start with What's the Story Morning Glory. If you are a bit more into harder rock and roll, wall of sound that set them off, go for Definitely Maybe. After whichever you choose, listen to the one that you didn't choose. From there, it's really tough to recommend anything, as there isn't a strong pull towards any particular album, and a lot of their B-sides are thought of to be better than any of their albums. The Master Plan is an album dedicated to the B-sides, and it's really, really good, maybe even their third best album. Be Here Now is one that stands out to me personally, but isn't arguably better than anything that comes after. Their latest album, Dig Out Your Soul, has a lot of creative ideas in it as well. Here's a list of essential Oasis songs, and you'll note that they are only from the first two albums. This is intentional, and I barely cut the list down to 11. The albums don't really have any low points, but there isn't a song from later albums that could be justifiably put in their place. Oasis fans have always come to expect a lot from the band. 
too much. But really, the band is to blame here. They constantly referred to themselves as the greatest band ever earlier in their career, and if they hadn't had so many setbacks after the first two albums, that may have become true. The band had an attitude that really set them apart from other bands. This of course would be their downfall eventually. The bandmates had a complex history ranging from drunken brawls in the studio to public outbursts on stage. Early on, fans loved this, and their music benefited from it, in some ways. They were loud, abrasive, yet simple and could write songs that instantly connected with audiences. They would never lose that either. Though Morning Glory and Definitely Maybe would never be eclipsed as albums, the songwriting was always very well polished. Oasis songs from every decade have a way of seeping into you. If I ever play a song from them, friends will almost always end up whistling along to songs they'd never heard before. I've had them even humming out solos they had never heard. Oasis had a way of playing songs that you seem to already know. Great songwriting from the brothers, especially Noah, was something fans could always expect, even if later it got a little stale. I may be wrong here, but if someone who had never heard of Oasis started with a later album, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up connecting with the album more than even the first few. I kept talking about the wall of sound earlier, and that was one thing that I never fully explained, but it's quite present in Oasis in a special way. It starts with instrumentation and ends in the mixing stage. I won't dive too deep into it right here either, but in mixing, they fill leftover frequencies with a variety of instruments. This could be a synth track, violins, an extra guitar line, never to really create a new melody, but to reinforce what's already there. Simplicity is always on point in Oasis music. Your ear perceives this as full, and though it can be done really poorly and become annoying, it's done pretty perfectly here. This mixed with the classic quiet verse, loud chorus formula, you get an explosion of music. Oasis didn't invent this of course, the wall of sound would have been used for quite a while in metal, but it works in an unusual way in Oasis. The simple instrumentation takes off, giving the songs a strangely heavy feeling for how lighthearted they are. Finally, I've thrown out the word simple quite a bit, and I'll explain what I mean by that. For Oasis, the term works in a couple of ways, but simplicity is everywhere and though that sounds like a bad thing, it's not. The lyrics are simple both theoretically and technically. Again, not a bad thing. That means lyrically he can lightly touch on a common song theme like in Wonderwall and be so simple and vague that a listener can discern almost any meaning out of it. Liam had even been quoted saying something along the lines of Wonderwall can mean anything, from the love of your life to a ticket that you thought you'd lost. It makes for a great practice in songwriting. While some bands are eager to tell you the name of their lost love, what they did to them, and how they'll win them back, Oasis is much more comfortable just writing about a breakup in general and how much they suck. Let the listener connect in their own way. This seems to be the goal, reinforced by Liam's sometimes painfully slow delivery of lines, stretching out vowels to the point that they are hardly themselves. You can almost always tell what he's saying on your first listen. Unfortunately, you can't see these guys play anymore. Liam and Noel getting back together is a common talking point in the music world, but seems less and less likely. Hopefully this gave you a bit of insight to a band that, above all else, represents rock and roll as it should be. Simple, powerful, inventive, and with hooks throughout. If they come back, be sure to be there. Did I miss anything? Any albums of theirs that you think deserve more credit? Let me know down below and subscribe for more band coverages. If there's a band that you're into or maybe can't get into and would like to, feel free to make any requests. Finally, if there's a certain aspect of bands that you think I should cover, I would love suggestions. See you around.